welcome to my channel Wisconsin Hugs. I am like stuck. We aren't moving very much, very far, very fast. And I'm almost done driving for the day. I I have like uh, maybe five miles to go and I got about 10 minutes left on my, on my uh, hours or you know, the time that I can drive and <laughs> with the E-logs. -E um, and so, uh, I thought I'd, basically I thought I'd make a quick video. Um, I'm going to show you a, a near miss accident that I had and I'll try to do better with the, the quality of the video because I'm still learning how to make my dash cam work. Uh, but in it, um, we do f have the identities of the two people that hijacked that truck in Ohio. Uh, what was that last week sometime that happened? And I did a video on that. I did a video on that and uh, uh, and so we know what their motive was, what was going on, what was going on in their heads. Uh, basically they were uh, drug addict whack dogs. Um, for want of a better word, I can't, I can't, you know, maybe not whack dogs, whack jobs. How's that for a word? You know, but yeah, they, you know, they basically, they were, uh, uh, the story is, is that, um, they had, well, I'll just cover the story from what, um, what we'll read about never know what's going to happen when you're driving truck but uh, my dash cam caught this image right here and I'm just going to go slow motion here. This is on Highway 57 uh, traveling south towards Plymouth and I'm driving by uh, actually Johnsonville Brats. There's a road here and a lot of accidents occur on this road um, because it's, it's an it's a, it's a intersection there and a lot of people don't realize they have to stop at that cross section and they just blow right through it and this is kind of what happens here but I'm gonna go slow motion so, so that you can get a good look at this but look to your left now already I'm starting I notice that car is coming and I'm thinking oh my god it's not stopping and you can see the other car coming forward and right there is where they hit. He, I mean, they just plowed right, just smacked right into their slow motion. And then I'm coming, and I'm already hitting the brakes as fast as I can. And there, and then, yeah, the car starts to tip over. And there it goes flying off the road. Both of them go off the road. And I just barely miss it. And right there is where they hit. He, I mean, they just plowed right, just smacked right into their slow motion. And then I'm coming, and I'm already hitting the brakes as fast as I can. And there, and then, yeah, the car starts to tip over. And there it goes flying off the road. Both of them go off the road. And I just barely miss it. at like uh, eight, 8 in the morning or 9 in the morning. Hel Richard Hellman said he always thought his brother would die from an overdose. Not that he'd want to go out with his wife on national TV like Bonnie and Clyde, he said. Yeah, uh, it's probably what he was going to die. From, he probably felt he'd die from an overdose and not like being shot, but... Richard, who serves as secretary and treasurer of Camp George for Wounded Heroes, uh, which offers all exclusive uh, vacations for first responders on disability, he told the Daily Mail.
Neil, his brother was a former plumber who injured his back and then got addicted to oxycodone on his way to becoming a lifelong addict. And he married Elaine, who worked in a sandwich shop out of high school, and they have two grown up children. They lived in Ohio uh, and also would stay with family in Tennessee and Kentucky, uh, abusing drugs and engaging in criminal activity to feed their habit. While he stayed with my mom when they lived in Kentucky, my mom said that at like 3 in the morning, Richard would be cleaning walls and cleaning floors, and Elaine would be outside uh, killing bugs. I mean, you just don't do that unless you're on some type of major drug. Recent times, they were living out of their car. Obviously, he wasn't doing any good for anybody, Richard said. Uh, all they was doing is harming people, stealing from people, and they were both strung out on drugs really bad. He said he hadn't spoken with his older brother in five years, having a falling out after he co-signed a loan to get his brother a car. Yeah. He went to Glinkwit on the loan, Richard explained, so I was talking to him. Uh, on the phone asking him why he was going to a Kid Rock concert and going to a Cavs Piston game in Detroit and not paying his car payment. Basically he told me to F off, that he could do what he wanted, and I said, well, I'm the last bridge you have, and you just burned it, and I hung up. He said there were several warrants for Rodney's arrest in Ohio. He often stayed with their cousin in Tennessee, and every time... He came back to Ohio, he'd get pulled over, yeah. Rodney and his wife would often lie about their identities, often using the name of a family member. When stopped on uh, Wednesday in London, Ohio, they gave their names Rodney and Barbara Taylor of Somerset, Kentucky, Rodney and Richard's late stepfather and mother. The last time Rodney did it, it was in Franklin, Ohio, and he gave police my name and part of my social security number. Then a couple weeks later, I'm coming off the exit in Troy, Ohio, and a cop pulled me over, and then all of a sudden, three other cruisers surrounded me, thinking I was him. It took me about two hours to clear up, and I was let go. Last night is the third or, or fourth time that he fled from police and gave a false name, Richard said. The incident began at 1 a.m., and they were pulled over in their Dodge Caravan by an officer with the London Police Department for having no rear lights cops found they also had no registration papers. So there's that truck stop. That must have been the, you know, must be some cop footage right here and that must be the semi truck they took. Yeah, the hijacked and unlocked but, un but occupied semi truck pictured with its lights on. And then there goes a the truck taken off. Apparently it crashed into one of the police cars. There it is with the bullet holes. Uh, police body cam footage released on Wednesday evening showed Elaine Hellman claimed that they had been at the emergency room because she had injured her eye. I just poked myself in the eye with scissors, she gave her and say. Uh, and then when the cop asked for Rodney's license, he explained he had his wallet in the woman's bag, but that her bag had been stolen. And as he looked for items in the car, he assured the officer he did not have a gun. My social security, my license, everything was in that thing. So yeah, they were constantly lying. And during their interaction, their dog that was in the car became increasingly agitated and restless. And both the couple and the cop tried to calm it down. And then uh, around 10 minutes, the couple pulled into a truck stop, abandoned their car, and fled on foot in the parking lot. The officer also exited his car, chased the pair with his taser drawn and then exclaimed the man had a gun and took uh, cover over a parked car. He's got a gun, the officer was heard shouting. Footage captured from the officer's patrol vehicle showed the man attempting to flee with his pants 
around his ankle, causing him to fall over. Uh, so the man did not fire the gun at that moment, but that live round was found at the truck stop later, so maybe he dropped a bullet, I don't know. And then as the officer attempted to deploy a uh, taser, the male suspect fell and pointed a handgun, and he was able to flee uh, to the semi-tractor. Uh, they got into that unlocked part semi while the driver was in the sleeper. And then uh, they attempted to coax the pair out of the semi, uh, uh, the London Police Department, with a megaphone. But after 20 minutes, it, oh no, they were in the parking lot of that truck stop. And then it, after 20 minutes, it pulled out, hit a cruiser, and took off. You see, I don't understand why the cops didn't have that blocked off, you know, at that time. Why they didn't so that he could not flee like he did. You know, then they chased the guy. And he said, usual top speeds reach about 60 to 65. Yeah, probably the sporter trucks, uh, they can't. They generally cannot go faster than 65 miles an hour. They're, they have a set, uh, their speedometer is set. You know, they, they, they do set those things. Uh, Warner does so their trucks are usually slower than everybody else's trucks and then uh, yeah then at 320 it was semi was brought to a halt and then the chase ended at the Dayton International Airport access road I bet that had to have been something so if you wanted to go hop on a plane at the Dayton Airport you probably were told yeah that's not gonna happen because we got this uh, hostage situation going on you're uh, all your, all these, uh, you're not going to be able to get into the airport. And then uh, finally footage at about, let's see, so yeah, about four hours they, they, they were trying to negotiate with the two. And then uh, at 7.30 uh, their SWAT team must have ran in there and and then they uh, they got fired on and, and they returned fire and killed the two. I don't know how to feel. I'm just glad to see it all came to an end. Obviously, they were desperate, and it had to come to an end one way or another. It's sad that it is the way it is. I'm glad none of the police officers and the truck driver were seriously injured or killed because, obviously, he wasn't going on without a fight. So, so that that is, uh, that is that's the two people. Now we know the story. We know why they did what they did. I was kind of wondering about that. I wanted to know who they were. I wondered if they were a married couple. Looks like drugs really uh, gave them a rough life because I'm 54 years old and man, I don't look like they do. So that drugs must have really, uh, yeah, that's what it does to you. It really messes you up bad. So that's the two right there, Bonnie and Clyde, right? Oh, what a way to end your lives, you know? All right, well, that's that. Now we know. We know who these two people were, you know? Rodney Hellman, 54, and his wife Elaine, 51. Rodney Elaine Hellman, the lived up to their names. They gave them all hell right to the very end. Well, okay. Well, that's my video for you all today. I hope you have a great day. Be safe out there driving. Careful out there. And uh, Wisconsin hugs.